everyone I'm Kristen welcome to my studio that I share here with mr. blacksmith um, today I'm gonna show you how to make some fun dangly hoop earrings real quick hopefully we'll see so I've already made my um, jump rings for my earrings I made three different staggered sizes but I'm gonna show you real quick how I made those jump rings I have different dowel sizes that I use to wrap my wire around to get the size jump ring I want. And let's see which ones I might use again. Let's do the small one. I'm using 16 gauge round sterling silver wire to make my jump rings. And what I do, if you can see, I just stick my wire in the little hole on my dowel and then I wrap my wire tightly around the dowel until I get the amount of little passings or the amount of jump rings that I'm going to want to use for my project. So if I was making a chain, I might keep wrapping until I don't have any more of my wire left. But I only need a couple for my earrings, so I'm going to stop. And then I'm just going to take my nippers and um, where I stuck my wire into the little hole, I am just going to nip that little tidbit off and let it fall out. And don't worry, that's not waste. I will use that for something else. I can recycle it, trade it my scrap in for more metal later. Or one of my favorite things to do is to melt my silver into little balls that I can then use for decoration on the jewelry pieces I make. Okay, so once that's trimmed, I'm just gonna slide that right off. And again, I just use my nippers to cut one jump ring at a time. For my earrings, I really only need two, but since I had one more pass on there, let's just go ahead and cut that, and I will save those for our rainy day earrings. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get my jump rings prepared for soldering. So when I've cut the large ones off the dowel, this is how they look. And what I wanna do is take and wiggle the ends just back and forth past each other until I can get them to butt right up against each other to make a nice seam for soldering. And that's probably okay. Let's go ahead and this one's really wonky, so I'm going to get it flattened with my favorite hammer. This is a Delrin mallet. I think this one's from Rio Grande. It's got a little weight to it. And just on my steel block, I'm just going to gently tap my metal down to get, get it a little flatter. Okay, so back to getting my ends together. And I'm going to do that with all of them. My middle size ones, they're a little smaller, so they're a little harder to work with, but I can still use my fingers on this one working the ends together. Okay. And then the tiniest one, it's really small and hardened up from wrapping, so it can be a little difficult to do with your fingers. So if you can't do it with your fingers, that's when we take a trusty pair of pliers. I like my um, flat nose pliers. This is actually the first pair of flat nose pliers I ever bought back in 1812 when I started making jewelry. And I got these from Hans and Dallas at JFF way, way back. But you can take your flat nose pliers and use those to help you wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until those two ends together. Sometimes people like to use two pairs of pliers I don't feel very coordinated with that, um, so I'm able to just do it with my fingers and using this one pair of pliers for right now. All right, let me just quickly do these other ones, and then we will go over to my solder station, and we will get our jump rings soldered. 
I almost forgot. Before we go to our solder station, we're going to go ahead and cut um, some 20 gauge or 21 gauge sterling silver wire to make our own earring hooks. Although you could order earring hooks, you could get earring hooks at the craft store. But when I'm going through the trouble to make my handmade jewelry, I like to make my own handmade earring hooks too. So here I have a sprungy spool of 21 gauge wire. Um, and I like to use about six to eight inches for one pair of earring hooks. Um, usually I don't measure, I just eyeball it. But since you guys are watching today, I'm going to at least pretend that I'm measuring. Um, my ruler's six inches long. I'm just gonna give myself a little extra. And just remember anything that I end up cutting off later, that might be too long on my earring hooks, I'll put that in my little scrap pile to either recycle or to melt into little balls for decorative components or melt into, I can melt a whole bunch and pour it into an ingot and mill out my own silver if I wanted to. All right, so I have my wire for my ear hooks and I have all six of my jump rings ready to go solder at the solder station. Okay, so now we're ready to solder. Before I start soldering, I'm gonna pull my hair back so it doesn't accidentally get in the way of the flame. Boop, boop, bop. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get make sure my jump rings, um, I'm gonna make sure that their seams are still meeting really well and they seem to be meeting just fine. So I'm gonna set them up on my solder brick. And when I am setting up jump rings for soldering, and let's say I have a bunch of them like I do, I like to set them all up with the seams facing me so that I know exactly where my seams are when I go to place my solder on them. Um, some of these need a little extra wiggle to make sure they're making good contact. If they're not making good contact, they will not solder together. The little guys look good. And I just make sure I'm leaving enough space between all of my jump rings. So I have a place to rest my torch flame if I need to, if my solder flies off or anything happens. Um, so nice and spaced out on my brick. Can you guys see? I don't know, okay. And once I have that done, I need to cut my solder. And I generally use um, silver wire solder. So it's made up of silver and zinc and some other components. It also comes in flat sheet. You can buy it pre-cut. You can buy paste solder and all those things are great. But I just have wire solder today. So I'm just going to cut some little pieces off. And I like to put them on a little charcoal block so that I can see them. And... I just use my handy scissors and if the scissors aren't any good, which these aren't, I will just see if I have another pair. And I am not cutting my finger, I am gently cutting my solder and my little finger chub catches it all so it doesn't fly away. And it lands on my little charcoal block. And I always cut more than I need just in case I lose some of my pieces of solder. I don't have to stop what I'm doing and recut. And also I like to have, even though I'm trying to be consistent cutting the same size, I am not always consistent. So I like to have a variety of little pieces to choose from so I can choose just the right piece of solder for what I need. So I have a bunch of little tidbits on here. They're about the size of glitter. And then I'm gonna put them over here where I can get to them because I'm gonna use my right hand for that. The other tools I have out, I have my trusty solder pick, my long steel tweezers, and I always have my crosslock tweezers out too. I don't think I'm gonna need them for this, but that's just my basic stuff I get out when I'm soldering. And flux. And our flux is made of borax and water and some other stuff. I buy pre-made flux. I don't make my own. Um, and I just keep it in this little container. And the flux 
I'm gonna brush right on my solder seams. I don't really need to brush it all the way around, all over my whole entire piece. I just need it on my solder seams. The flux is gonna help to keep my metal clean and free of oxidation long enough for my solder to flow into the seam. Solder doesn't like to flow into dirty seams. Okay, and meanwhile, I'm gonna have my earring wire on standby, that'll come next. I'm gonna light my torch. There we go. Get my flame turned up a little bit. That looks good. Um, I'm actually gonna do some pick soldering to solder my jump rings closed. You could do placement soldering where you just pick up a piece of solder with your tweezers and you place it on top of the seam where the flux is before you turn your torch on. I like to pick solder. So when I'm pick soldering, the first thing I do is clean my solder pick and I just heat it until it glows red and then I quench it. That just helps to get some of the built up flux off of my solder pick for pick soldering. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a piece of solder on my pick and what I'm doing is I'm just heating the piece of solder till it melts into a little ball and then I gently touch my pick to it and then the little ball is just sitting on my pick, okay? First jump ring. I like to use indirect heat when I'm soldering jump rings because it gives me a little bit more um, reaction time. So I'm gonna have my torch all the way down, my blue cones almost touching the brick, but not quite. And I'm moving right in front of my seam and I'm going to touch my little piece of solder right on the seam and then flow. And that one went successfully. I'm going to come back and get another little piece of solder. And gently get my solder off of my pick, which sometimes is easier said than done. And then I'm coming back to heat. That one went just fine. Now I'm gonna get another piece of solder on my pick. Gently heat my metal to get my flux a little sticky and transfer my solder to the seam. There we go. And I'm gonna come right up on there with my heat. Oh, my solder's kinda of going to one side, but I think so sometimes the solder wants to go to one side of the seam or the other side of the seam. And that could be for several different reasons. One could be that my seam's not really touching. Two, it could be that one side of the seam got up to solder flow temperature before the other side did, which is I think what happened here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to add another piece of solder to it. It is kind of oxidized, but let's just see if we get lucky. Gonna transfer my little piece of solder right on top. That worked, okay. And I accidentally had two pieces of solder on my pick, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this second piece that I already have on here and get it right on my seam. Then I'm gonna come back up with my torch. Ta-da! Okay, we have the two tiniest jump rings now. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm always bracing my hand somewhere when I'm pick soldering, um, just to keep my hand steady. And solder's on my seam. Ta-da. And let's do the last jump ring. Oh, yeah, okay. Right on the seam. Second try, right on the seam. Little indirect heat. Ooh, there we go. So the next thing we're gonna do, or I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take all my jump rings and I'm gonna quench them in a bowl of water. One quench, two quench. 
So after the jump rings are quenched, I can hold them in my hand. You can see that they are all soldered together and that they look a little dirty. So this is the oxidation that happened from the heat in the air. The silver starts to get copper oxide on it, which can turn this blackish color. So in order to get everything nice and clean and ready to finish our earrings, these are gonna spend probably about two or three minutes in my pickle pot um, to get them cleaned up. And the pickle pot has um, sodium bisulfate in it, which is a chemical and acid that will clean the oxidation off of my metal and get it nice and clean so I can move on to the next step. Okay, so while those jump rings are pickling, I'm gonna show you how I start my ear wires. So I had cut about eight inches or so of my 20 gauge drilling silver wire to make a pair of earring hooks. I like to make a little ball on each end of the wire for my earring hooks. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna put the wire in my crosslock tweezers. So my crosslock tweezers are in the middle of the wire. Lay that down while I get my torch on. Okay, for this I hold my torch facing away from me and I'm gonna, oh, I guess I'm gonna aim it at you guys. I. Um, I'm gonna take my wire and I'm gonna insert it into the flame right in front of the blue cone. So just a little bit in front of this blue cone and right at the end of the wire and then it will draw up into a little ball. And then I will flip it over and do the same thing on the other end. Bloop. And I'm gonna turn off my torch. I'm gonna quench this in my water. Okay. So now I have a wire with a ball on each end, but it is also dirty and oxidized from the flame. So I'm gonna put it in the pickle pot as well to get it clean. Okay, so now we are ready to texture our jump rings and finish up making our earrings. All right, so I love a good hammer texture. So today I'm gonna be using my special hammer that Mr. Blacksmith hand forged for me. And on my steel block, I'm gonna take my jump ring, I'm gonna hold it and gently hammer all the way around. And I'm gonna do that to all of my jump rings. And I'm only hammering one side. If I were to flip it and try to hammer both sides, I would just be squishing out the hammer marks on the front facing surface. Ooh, this one's kind of lost its shape a little bit. All right, so I applied a nice basic hammer texture to all of them, but just to make it a little bit more exciting, I am gonna use my riveting hammer um, to apply a little bit of a line texture on different areas around the jump rings. And this hammer, I've used the belt sander and I tapered it to a nice tapered point and polished this up so that I could get a nice thin line. So I'm just gonna choose a couple of areas. I'm not gonna do it all the way around. I'll just kind of stagger a little bit. And I am applying these um, hammer marks on, just on top of my previous hammer marks, just to give it a little extra texture. Oops, front side. And the last one.
fun. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is show how to make the earring hook. So we have our wire where I have balled both ends. What I'm gonna do is just kind of gently bend that in half and then take my scissors and cut it in half. So now I have two pieces. Each one has a ball on the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is start shaping my ear wires. I have my round nose pliers. And I am going to shape these all the way at the base of my round nose pliers because I'm going to make a loop and that loop is needs to be big enough to hold all three of my jump rings. So I hold it hold my pliers right up against the ball of the wire and I'm just going to wrap my wire around the nose of the plier until it meets the little ball. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other one. In the same position on my pliers around until it meets the ball. Just like that. Okay, okay. Next, we're going to shape the part of the ear wire that goes through our ear. And for that, I just like to use my wooden dowel. I have it right here um, on my workbench. There's lots of other things you can buy. There's all kinds of fancy glamour, glamour tools and pliers and wig jigs that you can buy. But um, I just have my handy little dowel. So what I do is I just hold my wire up against my dowel. Doesn't matter if you start here, doesn't matter if you start here. We're gonna shape it directly around our dowel so that both ear wires turn out the same. So this is about usually where I start. And I'm gonna take the loop, part of the earring wire, and I'm gonna wrap it all the way down around and underneath the dowel. And then I'm gonna take the other part of the wire and wrap it nice and tight up against the dowel down and around and underneath until it meets the back side of my loop like this and I like to give it a little curl with my finger that's a nice long earring hook right there I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one and if I wrap it down and around all the way underneath and then bring this one tightly around the dowel all the way around till it touches the back of my loop my two earring hooks are pretty close to the same I can always put them both back on the dowel and look at them and see if they need any adjustment that looks pretty good okay So we're gonna take those off and we are ready to assemble our earrings. So I have my two sets here, one for each ear of my jump rings. Um, I'm gonna take my earring wire and you can use your pliers or your fingers for this, but pliers work really well. I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers and I am just going to grab the part of the loop right by the ball and just gently open it sideways. I don't want to change the shape of the loop I created so I'm just opening it a little bit and then I'm going to slide on all of my jump rings making sure that the hammered side is facing forward and then I'll use my pliers again to grab the side of the ear wire that has the little ball on it and I'm gonna wiggle back and forth while I'm closing up the loop until the ball touches the main part of the ear wire. That's gonna help to harden up the loop so that it won't open up very easily for my jump rings to fall off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other one. Open it up gently to the side, get all my loops on there hammered side facing outward, grab it by the ball, and wiggle it 
until it touches the wire to help to harden it up. And sometimes if you look at it from the front, your loop might be a little off. You can just use your, your pliers again, probably my flat nose pliers, to make sure it's nice and straight. Okay, that one looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna deal with my extra long ear wires. It's nice to make them long so that you have the option, maybe instead of just making a loop with the ball, maybe you wanted to wrap your um, loop around your ear wire like I did on this one, if you can see up close. So, but now I've got to deal with the extra ear wire length. So I'm going to take my dowel that I shaped my ear wires on, which is right here, and I slide my earrings back on there. And at this point, I want to just make sure that they're hanging evenly. They look like they match pretty much. Then I'm just going to hold them together. And... I like a long ear wire, but not longer than my actual earring dangle. So I'm probably going to be cutting off maybe, what is that, maybe an inch or so. So I'm just going to take my scissors right now and cut and save these two tidbits for later. There we have that. We do want to sand the end of the ear wire because when we cut it, it's cut and it has these sharp edges around the edge of the wire and it's really uncomfortable when you put it in your ear. So you can take an emery board, you can make your own sandpaper sticks out of popsicle sticks um, and just gently sand around the edges of the ear wire. They also, um, there's also a, a burr for the flex shaft that you can use, a cup burr that basically you can put your ear wire in there, press your flex shaft pedal, and it will file and burr the end of the wire for you. And I always just kind of give it a finger test to see how it feels. Okay, that feels pretty good. Now we have choices on our finish. I mean, you could just say bing, bam, bam, done, but they're not very shiny. Um, we could apply a patina to them so that we have some darkness in our recessed areas and shiny on our high areas, like this one that I made earlier, if you can see. Um, for these, I think I'm just going to put them in the tumbler and make them really shiny. So they're going to go in the tumbler for about 20 or so minutes just to get a nice shine on them. And then they will be ready to wear.